AI is here and it's here to stay. But what does that mean to you as a data analyst? Is it going to replace you? Is it going to take your job? Or is it just a tool that will allow you to work smarter and more effectively down the road? It's hard to know, and we're at the very early stage. In the episode today, I sit down with Luke Barus and talk through what does this actually mean for you as a data analyst? Is this a career you should actually pursue? Let's find out. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. You know, one thing that's really cool about you, Luke, is you've been making a lot of videos about AI and data analytics recently. And, you know, different things with like Code Interpreter and ChatGPT and stuff like that. Would you mind sharing just some of the things, you know, that you've learned recently and what your biggest takeaway has been? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I think recently it's just like, so ChatGPT and AI has been getting obviously a lot of, you know, a lot of hype recently. Yeah. Some people are skeptic of it, especially with what we've been through with crypto and nfts and stuff like that like it's like is this going to be another thing that we get into and you know it just like falls on our face with so i think a lot of people are skeptic about it also a lot of people are scared for their jobs and so I'm, i want to be sensitive about that as well like is it going to replace jobs or not and definitely want to get into that but what i've been amazed at is you know in these past like five years of working as like a data analyst and trying to see what people like I'm always seeing these solutions pop up to make people's jobs easier. So I've seen solutions with like in Python to where you can, they make it to where it's like very similar to Excel and how you can move around data. And it's like, I mean, like not, you still have to learn this tool or whatever, but people have been wanting to make it easier to explore data and chat GBT in its ability to just provide wording, like you're talking to somebody and being able to explore data, it's just like blown my mind from what it can do. And obviously I have like, I've made a lot of videos recently, three or four videos recently, but this data set, this million row data set that I have, I've just told ChatGPT, like, hey, go into this, explore this, do some EDA. I want to focus on different job titles and salary. T tell me some things about that that I didn't notice before. And it will just go in and on the back end, write the SQL code to query the database and pull it out and then do the Python code to visualize it or maybe manipulate it even further, all without me coding and provide me those results. Granted, it can be wrong sometimes, just like any junior data analyst. So you have to be able to double check it and make sure that it's yeah. actually moving along correctly and on task. But damn, I'm just like blown away. And I'm just like, I'm like, whoa, I'm super optimistic about how this can be now. Like, I don't think tools are going to go away as far as Excel, Python or anything like that because of this. Like, we're still going to need that to dive deep. But as I'm constantly like, I'm just like sitting there and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I wonder, you know, some, some sort of like, how is salary trending this week with data analysts? Like I could go and build that out in Streamlit or I could just like say that to ChatGPT it goes and does this analytics and it provides me that graph and I don't have to get this custom dashboard. Like I, I get the information I need based on what asking. So yeah, I'm really <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm stoked about it. It's like, yeah, it's cool. Okay. I have lots of follow-up questions. My, my yeah. first one though is, so this database is like 1.4 million rows. I'm yes. assuming you have it in like some sort of like a data warehouse, like BigQuery or something like yes. that. Mm -hmm. Can you just like provide it like a big query link and it just goes into the big query? Yeah. So like code interpreter getting into, I guess, to the specifics of it, code in, so chat GBT plus yeah. you need chat GBT plus, which is $20 a month and the code interpret itself. You can't put that much data into it. It's very limited. Yeah. But I found this, this plugin called notable and they have a free option and a paid, but I've been able to stay on the free option the entire time. Oh, wow. And I can provide my secure BigQuery credentials to Notable. So it's behind a, a security blanket. And Notable will go in whenever I query ChatGPT, it goes to Notable. And then Notable does the query, brings out the data that it needs, and then just will display graphs or whatever via um, ChatGPT. So as far mm -hmm. as security goes, like, well, first, I don't really care about the security of the data set, sure. but if people did care about security of their data set, like this is a great feature. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, that was one of the questions I had later on because I was like, okay, great. We have, you know, code interpreter. We have, you know, these this AI chat GPT stuff. But like, how does like someone who's listening to this podcast today that's already a data analyst go and actually use it at their company today? Because I'll tell you yeah. what, when I was at Exxon, they didn't want me to download Python. No for security mm -hmm. reasons. Like right. I was not allowed to go download <laughs> Python, none, none of this AI crap. Uh -huh. like, so like how the heck is like, I mean, a, a data yeah. analyst at a company right now is supposed to be using these tools. Yeah, I think on the mind of a lot of executives at companies. And I think from reading, I was reading the consulting report recently, and a lot of these companies are going to be building or moving mm -hmm. towards in-house solutions for hosting these, whatever it may be, using OpenAI's API, and that, but you're now within your company's website and you can do similar functionality to thus query your own data and it be secure and your company allows you to. Can I give a hot take on that? Yeah. I think that's going to be a hot mess. Oh yeah, it's going to be a hot mess. And it's going to be a, like a money-making industry for who all these companies yeah. that are trying to market their machine learning models, that they're the best at helping you analyze your data. Yeah. yeah. Whoever solves it with the security issue in mind will do very well financially. I think the majority, this is a hot take from no one that I don't really matter. So my thought doesn't mind, really matter, but like, yeah, it matters. I, yeah. It I, I think the majority of companies that try to do this on their own will probably spend millions of dollars and have it be flushed down the toilet in two years. That's just my thought. But I think you're right that like there will be a company like Notable or maybe like deep note or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. That will figure out how to link chat GPT and generative AI to your data sets without security being an issue. And I think that company will do very well. I think that will happen down the road. So mm -hmm. kind of my thought right now is, yeah, like basically you either have a security issue or you're going to build it on your own. I think some companies will build it on their own and be successful. You know, the specifically smarter tech companies, I think some of like, like for instance, manufacturing companies, probably don't have that capability in the world set. Right. They might try because it sounds sexy and they'll be able to get investment dollars with it. But I just, it sounds hard. I have never done it. So I don't really yeah. know how hard it is, but it sounds No, hard. I think I, I'm talking about in-house solutions, but I think a lot of them also, uh, a, a very similar proportion are going to be using off the shelf solutions as yeah. well. So I, I'm sure there's going to be like somebody, some company like for manufacturers specifically to help you out with your data. Okay. Let's talk about the question that everyone's been dying to know though. Do you think that data analyst jobs are in jeopardy? Is the AI here to steal our jobs? Yeah. Hot topic. So back to that consulting report that I was reading, they polled executives at a lot of these large companies that generate more than a million dollars in revenue and asking them what is going to be the outlook on this. And more than half of them said that AI will actually increase the amount of employees. And then like another 20% said it wasn't going to have any impact and only 30% thought it was going to basically cause a loss in jobs or going to cause a, yeah, like Increase less jobs. Yeah. And with that 50% that thought that felt that they were going to increase their jobs, the specific jobs that they thought they were going to increase were specifically related around data. So data engineers, data scientists, and data analysts were like three of jobs that were actually going to increase by AI. Mm. If you think about Excel and its invention, so previously whenever we had spreadsheets, right, and they were paper spreadsheets and people would have to write them out. And we had big old rooms filled with these accountants in it. And they were just, their whole job was just sit there with this spreadsheet and, and calculate these numbers by hand and trying to figure it out. And then Excel was invented and you have this computer and it was advertised at the time it's going to replace you know, hundreds of different jobs and one person's going to be able to do it. And if you look at the jobs of accountants from that time period to now, they've done nothing but increase. So yeah. like because of this powerful tool, now we can do deeper dives into the data and provide better insights. So we're not doing these menial tasks. We can actually do more meaningful tasks, provide more value yep. and increase our output. So yeah. I, I I'm, love that. Really... I, I love that. The topic now is like, yeah, it's going to take our jobs, but I love the idea. It's actually going to create more jobs. And I think technology's done that a lot of the time. I love the accountant reference right there. Cause I think that's a great example. It's not like when we got rid of the abacus and got a calculator, yeah. but like we got lots of people. It's just like, it's a new tool for humans to use. 
And I'm not saying, right, we're not, we may not see a shift, right? We may, oh, maybe yeah. a shift to be like, maybe instead of just a data analyst role, it's AI data analyst, right? Yep. So it's going to require learning these tools. That's sure. why it's like this chat GPT, I'm pushing like, let's start learning now. And whatever we're learning from this chat GPT can be applied to another large language model that you, that you may be using. So it's going to require some new skills to learn. And, but I, I think your job's safe as long as you're staying up with those skills. Yeah, I 100% agree. It's just a new tool and you can use the tool still. I like to tell this kind of idea is like, you think about the internet, internet's like what, 25 years old-ish, right? And you think about website creators, website developers, website designers, stuff like that. I don't know how old like Squarespace or Wix is. My guess is obviously like probably 10 to 15 years, but it's like, Back in the day, you had to code websites. That's like, you wanted a website, you had to get a coder. Then, mm -hmm. you know, you fast forward in the future, wow, this new invention comes out where I can drag and drop and like use buttons and clicks and stuff and create websites all on, all on my own. But like, did that get rid of website developers? No, like, like you look at any quality website, like ESPN.com or like, I don't know, your local news station. It's not like those are built on Wix, right? Mm -hmm. Like you still need custom coders and web developers to yes. build high quality things. And I think the same thing will happen with AI and, and data analytics. Like, of course you can have a Squarespace edition of your analysis, but like, if you really want the in-depth, like, you know, really good, like you're going to have a person using AI or a person doing their own separate analysis in conjunction with AI to actually get like really high quality results. Oh yeah. So we're good. Mm, well, yeah, as long as we're learning and improving and just staying up with technology, I think we're going to be fine. But if we're sticking just like we're sticking to the same old, same old, yeah, I mean, you got to keep learning. I mean, anybody that works in this field knows that it's, it, even before AI, I mean, if you want to stay relevant in the field, you got to keep learning. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point that like data is always changing yeah. anyway. So you always have mm -hmm. to be learning. And really probably what, what this will probably do is, is if you look at, I mean, like if you think about the, the title prompt engineer, which I don't know how you feel about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but like if you think about like, coding in Python, aren't you, aren't you like, for instance, at the end of the day, you're trying to find business results or like insights that will help the business, you know, move forward. And you're using Python to kind of bridge the gap between data and these business insights. And you're like typing certain like magical things on your keyboard to make those insights pop up. I mean, couldn't you kind of say that like being, you know, for instance, writing SQL queries or writing Python has already been kind of prompt engineering, like in yeah. some way or another. Oh yeah. It's definitely a form of prompt engineering. I mean, we could all probably put on our, on our resume prompt engineer. So <laughs> I'm changing all of my titles. To <laughs> Update your LinkedIn bio. Yeah. That's awesome. And then the other thing that you said that I, I just wanted to, to mention was, you know, if we talk about programming languages as programming like R and SQL and Python and stuff like that. But it's not very often we actually think, wow, this is a language. And, and basically what ChatGPT is, and coding in general, is you're basically taking your human thoughts, writing them down in computer language for a computer to interpret, right? Mm -hmm. And basically what, what you said earlier made me realize that like ChatGPT and Code Interpreter is basically just Google Translate for... Yes. Business analytics. Oh yeah, that's all it is. I mean, they also have functionality to translate from one language like Python to R. So that it, it's just a glorified language translator. Yeah, which is a cool way to think about it. It's just Google Translate. It's just translating our human business needs to code and then back to the human you know, business needs again. The last thing I wanted to, to mention was when we were kind of talking before the show, basically you said, I don't see a future I'm doing my job without a code interpreter. You still think that's, that holds true? Yeah, I think so. I've just, with programming data nerd.tech, that's whenever I got introduced to GitHub Copilot, which mm -hmm. is basically OpenAI's large language model that you can have within your code editor. So mine's VS Code. And that's when I first started experimenting it. And so a lot of data nerd.tech, I didn't talk about it in the video that I made about it, but a lot of the coding that I did was actually helped through this GitHub Copilot going through and helping me out, doing a lot of the boilerplate code, helping me clean up things and realize things. I mean, it's just like, I, I can't imagine it whatsoever. I made a course on DAX 
for Power BI and like goes into how to do it or whatever. And then now how I can use ChatGPT to help generate some really complex DAX. I'm just like, I mean, I'm just blown away by that. I'm like, yeah, this is like, if, if we can save time, let's do it. But I also, because I have that knowledge of DAX, I can help fix it whenever it does run into those errors. So I think there is still going to be a knowledge base required to make sure that it's calculating correctly and you're getting the right output, but also taking you to that next level even quicker. Yeah. Okay. So in summary, AI is here. AI is useful. AI is a tool. It's not going to steal your job as long as you learn how to use it as a tool. Is that kind of a good yes. summary? Yeah, I think that nailed it. Write a book. Okay. Hey, no, <laughs> I'm not writing a book, but I'll tell you what, if you guys want to learn more about how to use data and AI together, definitely check out Luke's YouTube channel. He has a couple of videos, the last couple of ones that have been really good and mind blowing about what the power of AI and data can do. So Luke, anything else you want to add before we head off? No, I think that's it. Thank you so much for having me on here. This has been, this has been a blast. I love talking about data. So man, I appreciate it again. Hey, perfect. So you guys can check out Luke's YouTube channel. We'll have that in the comments or in the show notes down below. Definitely want to add him on LinkedIn and follow his YouTube as well. All right. What's up to everyone who made it to the end of the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I hope you feel more confident with all things AI and how you can actually use it as a tool, right? It's just a hammer and improve your life as a data analyst or, or make yourself look more attractive as a data analyst in your job search. AI is just a tool, you guys. Don't be afraid of it, but let's make sure we learn it now. As always, I have some useful resources for you in the show notes down below. Check those out. I also included a couple different ways that you can use data and ChatGPT and other AI tools to do some pretty cool things. So you guys want to check out that free resource in the show notes down below. Hope you guys have an awesome week and I'll see you guys on next week's episode.